Why does this keep happening to me? Every time I think I've found love, it's ripped away. Am I cursed? Am I not worthy of happiness? I've changed everything about myself, followed every piece of advice, and still, I'm left broken. What is wrong with me? How much more can I take? You know, Sarah, these past few months with you have been the best of my life. I can't imagine a future without you. Oh, John, you're so sweet. I feel the same way. Sarah, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Sarah, you mean the world to me. You're my best friend, my confidant, and my greatest love. I can't imagine my life without you. Will you marry me? Oh my god, John. Yes. Yes, of course, I will marry you. You've made me the happiest man alive. This is so beautiful, John. I can't believe it. We're getting married. Yes, we are. And I want everything to be perfect for us. You know, my pastor always says it's important to pray and commit any major decisions in our lives to God. I think we should start praying for our wedding, to ensure everything goes smoothly and to seek God's blessings. Pray and commit? John, this is a time to celebrate. I want to tell all my friends, my family. We should be enjoying this moment, not worrying about fasting and praying. I understand, Sarah. But I believe starting ahead of time with prayer can help us. It's not just about the wedding day. It's about our entire future together. John, I have fasted before. I just think it's too much right now. We can still pray and fast after we're married. Right now, I need to travel and invite everyone, and there is no way I can manage fasting during all this. I get it. Maybe I'm taking this too seriously. Let's leave the matter for now and focus on planning our wedding. We can always revisit the idea of praying later. Thank you, John. You know, I love your dedication to your faith, but sometimes it's just overwhelming. Let's just enjoy this moment and celebrate our love. Absolutely. I can't wait to get married to the love of my life. And maybe I'll get a little help with planning from my beautiful fiancé. Of course, you will. Now let's start spreading the news. Together, we'll make this the best wedding ever. Hi, Mom. Oh, Sarah. What brings you here? You look excited. I have some wonderful news. John proposed to me, and I said yes. We're getting married. Oh, really? That's... quite a surprise. Congratulations, dear. Thank you, Mom. I'm so happy. I can't wait to start planning the wedding. Yes, of course. This is quite sudden, isn't it? I know, but it feels right. John and I are ready for this step. Well, I hope you thought this through. Marriage is a big commitment. We have, Mom. I've thought about it, and I'm confident this is God's plan for me. God's plan, huh? That's good, I suppose. Just make sure you're not rushing into anything. We're not rushing, Mom. We just know it's right. We want to start planning right away. I see. Well, if you need any help with the planning, let me know. Thank you, Mom. I'm so happy. I can't wait to start planning the wedding. Actually, I was hoping to see Amanda. Is she around? Oh, Amanda. She's not here. She already went to work. She doesn't stay around on weekdays, you know. Oh, that's right. I remember her mentioning it to me some time ago. This one you were looking for her. Lel will extend the wedding invitation to her already, no need to be asking of her. It's not just the invitation, Mom. I was hoping Amanda could be my chief bridesmaid. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll inform her when she returns home. 
Thanks, Mom. Your support means a lot. Of course, dear. Anything for you. I'll keep you updated with the plans. I have to go now, but I'll see you soon. Yes, dear. Take care. Can you imagine? This one too wants to shame me and my daughter. Oh, Amanda should be your chief bridesmaid. The audacity. Not only is she getting married before my Amanda, but she also wants to make my daughter her chief servant. After all these years of serving her mother, now my own daughter will serve her? Never. Well, the bird that thinks it can outfly the hunter will soon learn its lesson. It's time to pay a visit to the strong doctor. The very one I used to deal with her late mother. Let's see how her perfect little wedding plans go now. Nonsense. The girl I asked you to deal with her mother before, she's now a thorn in my flesh. She and her daughter are not allowing me and my Amanda to have any peace. Every day, there's one man or another doing everything to marry her. And now, she's brought a suitor. Meanwhile, my Amanda hasn't seen a serious suitor in her life. The one that did come, the one we were ready to manage, he manipulated my daughter and ran away. And you believe it's her late mother's curse affecting your daughter? I'm sure of it. That woman laid a curse on Amanda before dying. Now, Sarah thinks she can flaunt her luck in front of us. Should I pursue her suitor then? No, no. If you succeed in pursuing this one, many other men will come. They follow her around like flies follow a corpse. No, I need something more permanent. What do you want to be done? Masquerade her face. Let any man who sets his eyes on her see a masquerade instead of her face. That way, she'll spend her useful years without any suitor or marriage. She has the guts to ask for my daughter to be her chief servant. Let her pay for her insolence. Very well. I will perform the charm. Give me a moment. Take this charm. Sprinkle a few drops on her doorstep tonight, where she will walk. From then on, every man who looks at her will see a masquerade. Thank you. This will teach her and bring peace to me and my daughter. Oh, this dress is gorgeous. And look at that ring. It's perfect. I can't wait to see John's face when he sees me in the dress. She must be asleep now. This will teach you to meddle in my affairs, Sarah. You and your mother will never get the better of us. Let every man who looks upon you see nothing but a hideous masquerade. May your beauty be hidden and your suitors driven away. Yes, it's done. This cake is stunning. I have to show this to John. And these flowers. Beautiful. John, you won't believe the wedding gown I saw online last night. It's absolutely perfect. And there is this cake, four tears, with delicate sugar flowers. I think it's exactly what we've been looking for. That sounds great, Sarah. You have such a good eye for these things. I can't wait to show you the pictures. Just imagine, our perfect day, everything exactly how we dreamed it. Leave her alone. Or I'll destroy you. John. I. Maybe we should talk about something else. What? Why? The wedding is just around the corner, and we still have so much to plan. What's wrong? It's nothing, just. Let's change the topic for now. No, John, what's going on? Why suddenly change the topic? We don't have any concrete plans yet, and the wedding is so close. I said, let's change the topic. But why? We need to talk about this. What's gotten into you? I can't do this, Sarah. I can't marry you. What? Why? What are you talking about? I just can't, okay? Just drop it. John, please, tell me what's wrong. We can fix this. There's nothing to fix. It's over, Sarah. I'm done.
What just happened? Why did he leave? Oh my god, somebody tell me this isn't happening. I just don't understand, Lisa. Everything was perfect. We were so happy. Why would he suddenly call off the wedding like that? I know, Sarah. It's heartbreaking. Sometimes people get cold feet or have second thoughts. Maybe he got scared. It wasn't just that, Lisa. There was something in his eyes, fear, confusion. It was like he saw something that terrified him. What do you mean? Did he say anything specific? No, he just kept saying he couldn't do it and that it was over. But I saw the look on his face. It was like he saw a ghost or something. Men can be really complicated. But, Sarah, I've been meaning to tell you something for a while. What is it? I've noticed that you don't always put much effort into your appearance. Men, they're visual creatures. They like to see a woman who takes care of herself, good makeup, nice hair, stylish clothes. Are you saying I don't dress well enough? I spend a lot of money on my clothes. I know you do, but maybe it's not just about spending money. It's about how you present yourself. I had a friend who was in a similar situation. She started taking her appearance seriously, and things changed for her. Men started noticing her. So, you're saying I need to spend even more money on how I look? If that's what it takes. Look, I'm not saying you need to go overboard. But maybe try to put a bit more effort. You know, good makeup, a new hairstyle, some stylish outfits. It could make a difference. Do you really think that will change anything? I believe it can. My friend was in the same boat, Sarah. She started dressing better, and men began to take notice. She got a lot more attention, and now she's happily engaged. I don't know, Lisa. It feels so superficial. I just want someone to love me for who I am, not just how I look. I understand, but sometimes first impressions are important. Once they see how amazing you are inside, it will match the outside. Trust me on this, Sarah. Give it a try. You might be the next in line to find happiness. All right, I'll give it a shot. But it feels so strange to think that how I look could have such an impact. You've got nothing to lose, Sarah. Let's go shopping this weekend and see if we can find some new looks for you. We'll have fun with it. Thanks, Lisa. I guess it's worth a try. I just hope it makes a difference. So, tell me, Sarah, has all the advice I gave you been working out? Oh, Lisa, you won't believe it. It's been amazing. I was skeptical at first, but I decided to give it a shot. I started dressing up more, doing my makeup, and taking care of my appearance. And guess what? What happened? A few months ago, this incredibly cute, responsible young man saw my pictures online and asked me out. He's serious, Lisa. He wants to settle down. No way. That's fantastic. Who is he? His name is Daniel. He's good-looking, God-fearing, and from a well-to-do home. We've been talking for a while now, and he's really serious about our future together. That's amazing, Sarah. So, when are you meeting him next? We're meeting this evening at Bella's Bistro. I'm so excited, Lisa. He's everything I've ever wanted in a man. And what will you say when he pops the question? Oh, Lisa, I'm going to shout, yes. I do. He's responsible, good-looking, God-fearing, and from a well-to-do home. What else could I possibly ask for? I'm so happy for you, Sarah. You deserve this. I can't wait for you to come back and tell me all the good news. Thank you, Lisa. Your advice really changed my life. I'm so excited for what's to come. You've got this, Sarah. Enjoy your day tonight and I'll be waiting to celebrate with you when you come back. Thanks, Lisa.
I'll let you know how it goes. Sarah, these past few months have been incredible. I've never felt this way about anyone before. I truly believe you're the one for me. Daniel, you have no idea how much that means to me. I feel the same way. I love you, Sarah. I want to build a future with you. I love you too, Daniel. Leave her alone. Or I destroy you. Daniel. No. No, this can't be happening. Daniel? What's wrong? I... I can't do this. What do you mean? You just said you love me. I was wrong. I... I made a mistake. This isn't right. Daniel, please. Don't do this. Not again. I can't, Sarah. I just can't. Excuse me, sir. Here's the ring for your propo. No, it's not happening. Forget it. What? What? But Daniel, you just said you wanted a future with me. I was wrong. I... I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. Why does this keep happening to me? Every time I think I've found love, it's written away. First John, now Daniel. Am I cursed? Am I not worthy of happiness? I've changed everything about myself, followed every piece of advice, and still, I'm left broken. What is wrong with me? How much more can I take? Lisa, you won't believe what happened, Daniel. He just... He just called off the engagement out of nowhere. One moment, he was confessing his love, and the next, he was gone. It was like John all over again. What? How could he do that? Did he say why? He said he was wrong, that he was mistaken about loving me, and then he just walked out. The waitress even brought the ring he was going to propose with, but he... He just stormed off. This is unbelievable. Sarah, this kind of thing doesn't just happen. Not like this, not repeatedly. I don't know what to think anymore, it feels like I'm cursed. Sarah, I think this might be something spiritual. The way they all left, so suddenly and without reason. It's suspicious. I don't think it's just bad luck. What do you mean? I mean, there could be something more to this, something we can't see, we need to get you some help, Sarah. My pastor, he can help you. We need to go see him immediately for prayers. Do you really think it could help? Yes, I do. We can't just sit back and let this keep happening. We need to fight back, spiritually. Let's go see my pastor. He'll know what to do. We'll get through this, Sarah. You're not alone. Sarah, an enemy has done this. The Bible speaks of how the enemy sows weeds among the wheat. This is what has been happening to you. What can we do, Pastor? First, we must recognize that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, as it says in Ephesians 6.12. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came that we might have life, and have it more abundantly. Isaiah 49, 24-25 says, can the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captives of a tyrant be rescued? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the tyrant be rescued, for I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. Please, Pastor, pray for me. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for your divine intervention in Sarah's life. We rebuke every plan of the enemy, every curse, every spiritual bondage in Jesus' name. We come against every marital embargo and spirit of marital delay that has been placed upon her. We declare and decree that she is free from these chains in the name of Jesus. She's my lawful captive. Isaiah 49, 24-25 says even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the tyrant shall be rescued. 
I command you, spirit of bondage, leave her now in the name of Jesus. No, she's mine. Isaiah 54, 17 declares that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. We stand on the word of God. The blood of Jesus sets Sarah free. Leave now. Yes I'll go away please. Thank you Jesus. It is done, Sarah. You are free. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Give all the glory to God. David, you won't believe how everything changed after the pastor's prayer, it was like a miracle. Six men came seeking my hand in marriage, including those who had previously left me. I had to choose the best among them, and that was you. All glory to God. It's truly amazing how things turned around. And the most astonishing thing? My stepmother called me right after the pastor's prayer. She begged me never to come to her home again. She said she didn't want to have anything to do with me anymore. Really? What did she say exactly? She sounded desperate, almost fearful, she kept repeating that I should stay away and that she wanted no contact with me. That's incredible. It's clear that God has been at work in your life, Sarah. His power is undeniable. Yes, David. His power is truly undeniable. I am so grateful for his intervention and for the life we have now. We will continue to praise him on live in his light. He has great plans for us. Yes, indeed. All glory to God. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. God bless you.